and my name is Jorge Gilad with the Fulton Sheen Prayer Group Apostolate. What you are about to experience is a journey in truth, and we want to share this truth with you. The Venerable Archbishop Fulton Sheen, known for his preaching and especially his work in radio and television. In the 1950s, his Emmy Award-winning television show called Life is Worth Living made him a household name. During his time in ministry, Sheen authored 67 books and recorded over 300 lessons. We believe that you will truly be blessed and enjoy these recordings of his 50 lesson series titled Life is Worth Living. God love you. Last week in Lesson 14, Suffering, Death, and Resurrection, By His Wounds We Are Healed, Sheen discussed Christ became a sin-bearer through a sinless obedience, and that the wounds of our risen Lord were important to our salvation. Today in Lesson 15, The Ascension, Beyond the Space Age, she will be discussing, is Christ's incarnation linked to His ascension? Did Christ ascend to heaven with his human nature intact with his divine nature. You're going to love today's program and discover that life is worth living. God love you. And welcome back to the Fulton Sheen Prayer Group Apostolate Program. And as we should begin all of our prayer groups, we will do so by having Father Will Combs of the Brothers of the Beloved Disciple Lead us off in prayer, uh, invoking the Holy Spirit. Father Will Combs, would you please? Sure. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your Son, Lord Jesus. We thank you that you love us so much that you show us the way as you are the way. In your ascension, you pray, and the Father descends upon us the Holy Spirit. So come, Holy Spirit, with a new Pentecost. Bless our sharing in this hour that we may grow in the good news and follow Jesus in the way, the truth, to everlasting life. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Father Will. Again, Pastor of St. Mary Magdalene Catholic Church here in the Archdiocese of San Antonio. And again, as we begin each lesson, we will do so by praying the Litany of Humility led by Father Clay Hunt, a uh, priest of the Archdiocese of San Antonio and chaplain for the Criminal Justice Ministry here in this wonderful Archdiocese. Father, would you please lead us? In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 O oh, Jesus, meek and humble of heart, Hear me. me. From the desire of being loved, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being esteemed, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being extolled, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being honored, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being praised, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being preferred to others, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being consulted, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being approved, Deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being humiliated. Deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being despised. Deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of suffering rebukes. Deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being calumniated. Deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being forgotten. Deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being ridiculed. Deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being wronged. Deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being suspected. Deliver me, Jesus that others may be loved more than I. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That others may be esteemed more than I. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That in the opinion of the world others may increase and I may decrease. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That others may be chosen and I set aside. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That others may be praised and I unnoticed. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That others may be preferred to me in everything. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That others may become holier than I, provided that I become as holy as I should. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Father Clay, Father Clay Hunt. And now, Fulton Sheen. Peace be to you. In this lesson, we consider the creed, particularly those words that refer to the ascension of our blessed Lord and the fact that he is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. After the resurrection, our blessed Lord remained 40 days on earth, 
During that time, he instructed the apostles about the kingdom of God and laid the structure for his mystical body, the church. Moses had fasted 40 days before giving the law, and Elias had fasted 40 days before the restoration of the law. Now for 40 days the risen Savior laid the pillars of the church and the new law of the gospel. The forties were about to end, and the apostles were bidden to await the fiftieth day, which was the day of Jubilee. When the Thursday came for the ascension of our divine Savior, he led his apostles out to Mount Olivet, not from Galilee, but from Jerusalem, where he had suffered. Would he leave earth for his heavenly Father? The sacrifice was now completed. He gathers his apostles about him as he prepares to ascend to the heavenly throne. He raises his hands in benediction over them. And the hands that were pulled down from heaven to earth to give them that blessing bore the imprint of nails. Pierced hands best distribute blessings. If you ever want good counsel, go to someone who has suffered. Scripture now speaking of the resurrection. These are not all the texts, but just one or two. And even as he blessed them, he parted from them and was carried up into heaven. And is seated now at the right hand of God. There are several words here which need explanation, such as the fact that our blessed Lord ascended, that he is seated, and that he is at the right hand of the Father. Uh, the ascension we are not to think of as a local motion. We are not to think of our blessed Lord, for example, as going beyond the farthest star, or to think of him as being so many millions of light years away. Or are we to think of him as going up from one point to another? And certainly not are we to envisage him and the ascension as a form of space travel. Our blessed Lord once had a descent, that is to say, came down from heaven. But that really did not mean a physical descent. It was rather a drawing aside of the veil in which Divinity was revealed to humanity, so to the ascension, not like a rocket. Our blessed Lord is no closer to heaven when he passes, for example, if we imagined him passing the planet Arcturus. Rather, the ascent and the descent that are mentioned in the creed and in Christian doctrine refer rather to humiliation and exaltation. When our blessed Lord came to this earth, he humbled himself. When he ascended into heaven, he was exalted. And that is the way the scripture always speaks of him. He ascended into heaven because he had humbled himself and was made obedient to the death of the cross. But what does the word seated mean? That he sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. The word seated here means repose after conflict cross is left behind with all of its dust and thirst and struggle and pain. Being seated does not mean that our Lord is passive. You remember in the book of Genesis, God was said to have rested after creation. Did that mean he was tired? Certainly it did not imply that his creative arm was weary. Our blessed Lord seeks not to recuperate, but because his work is done. On the cross, our blessed Lord said, It is finished. All the types and figures and symbols of the Old Testament had now been completed. Every word of Scripture had been fulfilled. There is no other mediator. The cross is the perpetual atonement and satisfaction for the sins of men. As our Lord 
that said to the apostles, I have finished the work. Or rather, praying to his heavenly Father, he said, I have finished the work that thou hast given me to do. That is the meaning of our Lord being seated. But what does it mean to say that he is at the right hand of the Father? Well, the right hand implies power. And it means, therefore, that he is the power of God and has power throughout the universe. The right hand does not mean a physical nearness. It means a sharing of glory. Our Lord is acting as a mediator between God and man. That is his power. The ascension of our blessed Lord is described in sacred scripture too as a high priest entering the sanctuary beyond the veil. That is a rather unusual expression, beyond the veil. What does it mean? It refers to something in the Old Testament. The temple of Jerusalem and the tabernacle in the desert before it had hanging before the Holy of Holies a veil. It was very heavy, gorgeous, mysterious. It was hung and suspended according to the pattern that was given on the mount. It was highly embroidered of purple, blue, scarlet, and finely twisted linen. And then the golden cherubim were woven into it. All of that is described in the book of Exodus. Now behind that veil, lay enshrined the gorgeous symbols of Jewish history and Jewish faith. Behind it was the Holy of Holies. The priest was allowed to enter that Holy of Holies only once a year. And then only after he had purified himself with blood and sprinkled this veil with blood When this happened, the people had, for one brief moment, some communication, thanks to their priest, with this Holy of Holies. But for the rest of the year, it was hidden. And from behind that veil, the sound of bells and the rustle of the beautiful vestments of the priest and the movement of feet there was some dim adumbration of a mystery. But what must the Jews have said to themselves? As they looked at that veil, they knew they could not enter it. They must have said, separate it, separate it. Cut off we are from God. That sentiment must have continued in the heart of every true man of the Old Testament. Now the veil in the New Testament is called the flesh of our Lord. When our blessed Lord died on the cross, that veil of the temple was rent asunder. It was rent from top to bottom, as if to indicate that it was not done in any way by the hand of man. In other words, this barrier between heaven and earth, between God and man, was now destroyed. Thanks to the death of Christ, there was access to heaven, access to the heavenly Father. There might have been indeed some symbolism in the fact that the centurion pierced the side of our blessed Lord, for as I said, sacred scripture calls his flesh the veil. And when that side was pierced, there was indeed revealed the Holy of Holies, which was the heart of the all-loving God. But in any case, sinful humanity before the redemption could never enter behind that veil. Now Christ took upon himself our human nature 
He bore it, he lived it, he died in it, and he resumed it after he had laid it down. He glorified it, and he broke down that middle wall of partition between God and man. And thus he made peace. I look down to my nature laden with sin, I despair. I look up to Christ's nature. It is now risen and descended. And I'm full of joy. I look to my own nature and I see my helplessness. I look up to Christ's nature. I see my hope. I look down to my nature, see my sin. I look up to his and I see his holiness. And it is that holiness of the human nature of Christ that has risen now to heaven. What does it mean to us? It means many things, but we will just mention two. One, it means that a human nature like ours is in heaven. Think of it. The model of what our body will be if we live in it the very life of Christ. Secondly, it means that we have a high priest in heaven who can sympathize with our weaknesses because he once bore our human lot. First we say there's a human nature in heaven. When God came to this earth, he took upon himself a human nature. That human nature, we said, was thrown into the fires of Calvary in reparation for the sins of man. Risen, it now ascends. So that there is a continuity between the incarnation and the ascension. In the incarnation, our Lord took a body, yes, but not just a body to suffer. Otherwise, he would have taken it for a time. If he took that human nature just in order to suffer for our sakes, Why did he not divest himself of that human nature? After all, his garments had been soiled and stained. They had borne the heat and burdens of the day. Why not throw them off? No, because human nature was taken not just to atone for our sins. The end and purpose of God coming to this earth was to bring us to perfect union with the Father. And how could he do this? By showing that our flesh is not a barrier to that intimacy. By taking it up to heaven itself. By showing that those who pass through trials, suffering, whatever they be in this life, misunderstanding, will have their body glorified. By sharing in Christ's cross, we share in his glory. The goal of all humanity is in some way reached in the ascension. That's the full beauty of our Lord returning again to the Father. He brought back with him something that he did not have when he came to this earth. He brought his divinity, yes, he took his divinity back with him. But he also took something else back. He took back the human nature. And the most blessed and wonderful truth is taught in that fact. Remember our Lord reiterated it when he was talking to Caiaphas and he told him that one day he would see the Son of Man seated on the right hand of power. In other words, that human nature that was so humiliated is no longer a humiliated human nature. It's now glorified. His ascension is the true carrying of that real humanity, complete in all of its parts, body and soul, up to the very throne of God. That is the purpose of the incarnation, to be our model, to be our pattern. In a certain sense, because he's the new Adam in heaven, you and I are there. We are not yet there actually, but we are there potentially so long as we remain in the state of grace on this earth. But that's not the only reason he took 
with him in human nature. He also took a human nature in order that he might be able to sympathize with our own weaknesses. The Epistle of the Hebrews has a beautiful text on this point. It reads, It is not as if our high priest was incapable of feeling for us in our humiliations. He has been brought through every trial, fashioned as we are, only sinless. Our blessed Lord, therefore, in heaven, is our high priest. He is our mediator. He is one who can understand us. He is not apart from us. Because he had our human nature. That human nature, when it was on this earth, was so sensitive that it was thrilled with the beauty of a lily. It was moved with the fall of a wounded sparrow. It was keenly touched by anything that could touch a human heart, whether high or low, good or bad, friend or enemy. No man can be beyond the reach of that all-comprehending sympathy, because no man can ever be beyond the embrace of that love. He can sympathize with the poor, because he was poor, with the weary and the heavy laden, because he has been tired and worn, with the lonely and misrepresented and persecuted, simply because he has been in that position, because he was tried, tried in mind as well as in heart, tried by fear, by sad surprise, by mental perplexity, with a hard conflict with evil, great spiritual depression, he's able to feel to the uttermost to the keenest sorrows of our earthly lot. And the beauty of it all is that this tried one is without sin. And that is what enabled him to drink in sympathy, and nothing but sympathy in all sorrows, simply because he was without sin. So that we have a human nature, therefore, in heaven, a pattern human nature, that knows all of our weaknesses and all of our trials. What a beautiful hope this is to all. A high priest who can understand our infirmity. Now that he's taken this human nature, now that it is in glory at the right hand of the Father, what does he do there? Has he a work? Certainly. He's a mediator. We might almost say that he's constantly showing his scars to his heavenly father. And he's saying, see these, I was wounded in the house of those that love me. I love men. I suffered for them. Forgive them, heavenly father. He is our sacrifice. He's ever present before the Father, as Scripture puts it, ever making intercession for us. You see, we very often get a wrong understanding of the life of our blessed Lord. We think of him as just living on this earth, preaching the Beatitudes and suffering. No, our blessed Lord did not come down just for that. He is living making intercession for us, the representative of all who invoke him. Certainly, he has finished the work of justice on earth because he paid the debt of sin, but the work of mercy in heaven is unfinished. That goes on and on, and the reason it goes on is because we need his intercession. I would very much like to continue speaking of this mystery of the ascension. But we ought to treat one other little point in the creed, namely, 
that from heaven our Lord will come to judge the living and the dead. Our Lord on this earth said he would come to judge the world. No other teacher ever said that. And he said that as the judge he would return seated on a throne of glory tended by angels to judge all men according to their works. Imagination recoils at the thought of any human being able to penetrate into the depths of consciences, to fetter out the hidden motives, to pass judgment on them for all eternity. But this final judgment is not hidden from the eyes of God as well as man. And scripture puts it Brothers, our Lord put it, and then the sign of the Son of Man will be seen in the heaven. Then it is that all the tribes of the land will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming upon the clouds of heaven with great power and glory, and he will send out his angels with a loud blast of the trumpet to gather his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. When he comes will not be judged to judge a mere circumscribed area of the earth in which he labored and revealed itself. It will be to reveal himself and to judge all nations and all empires. When that time is, nobody knows. He refuses to tell us. He only says that it will be sudden. Be sudden like a flash of lightning. He, the Savior, is the judge. What a beautiful way to have a judgment. Can you imagine any earthly judge saying to a criminal before him, you are guilty. I am going to take all of your sins and crimes upon myself. I will suffer for you. What a judge he would be. But our blessed Lord took upon himself all of our sins as we stood before the bar of divine justice. And he who suffered for us will come to judge us. And what a judgment it will be when we will see one who loved us so much. And as the Gospel of Matthew puts it, and he will sit down upon the throne of his glory, and all nations will be gathered in his presence, where he will divide men one from the other, as the shepherd divides the sheep from the goats. He will set the sheep on his right, and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those who are on his right hand, Come, you have received a blessing from my father. Take possession of the kingdom which has been prepared for you since the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. Thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you brought me home. Naked, and you clothed me. Sick, and you cared for me, a prisoner, and you came to me. Whereupon the just will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw thee hungry and fed thee, or thirsty, and gave thee to drink? When was it that we saw thee a stranger, and brought thee home, or naked, and clothed thee? And the king will answer them, Believe me, when you did it to one of the least of my brethren here, you did it to me. Then he will say to those who are on his left hand, Go far from me, you that are accursed into that eternal fire which has been prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you never gave me food. I was thirsty, and you never gave me drink. 
I was a stranger, and you did not bring me home. I was naked, and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison, and you did not care for me. Whereupon they in their turn will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw thee hungry or thirsty, or a stranger or naked or sick, or in prison, and did not minister to thee? And he will answer them, Believe me, when you refused it to one of the least, my brethren here, you refused it to me. And thee shall pass on to eternal punishment and the just to eternal life. Such is the gospel of Matthew and the story of the return of our Lord. The point now is that our blessed Lord took upon himself a pattern human nature. That human nature was something like a die that a government makes when it wishes to mint coins. When the die is fashioned, millions of coins can be fashioned like unto it. Christ, our pattern man, was born. He suffered. He overcame temptation. He rose from the dead and was glorified at the right hand of the Father. We are the coins. Because he was born, we are to be born. Not physically, but spiritually. Because he denied himself and suffered, we are to deny ourselves. The cross becomes the condition of the empty tomb. And once our life is patterned upon his crucifixion, then our life shall be patterned also upon his glorious resurrection and his glorious ascension. Are we as coins? He will ask for coins and he will say, Whose inscription is there on? Is it Caesar's? Do we belong to the world? Or we belong to God. May it be so. God love you. Wow. Do we belong to Caesar? Do we belong to the world? Do we belong to God? Man, that was amazing. I love that. Uh, folks, if you're just tuning in right now, you are listening to the Venerable Fulton Sheen with his life is worth living. Uh, Father Will, would you please share with us uh, what you gleaned from today's lesson? Oh, thank you, Richard, with great joy. Uh, which good, what good food, the ascension. Um, as we see in the Old Testament, uh, Enoch and Elijah ascend body and soul and, into heaven. So we see Emmanuel in the New Testament ascending into heaven, this JC, this Jesus, the Christ, the ascension. And I think there's three important messages that I got out of this. Uh, the first is peace, that, that God wants to grant us peace in the ups and downs of life, that there are exaltations and there are humiliations. There are moments of ascension and there's moments of dissension in our life, not just at the end of our life, but <laughs> definitely during our life. I mean, look at Jesus. I mean, he was ascended with his uh, annunciation, the visitation. There was an exaltation by magna magnifying the Lord by our Blessed Mother. And then the humiliation, there was no room in the inn. You know, he was exalted with, with the angels glorifying and the shepherds and the magi coming. And then he was humiliated as he had to go to Egypt in exile. You know, he was exalted in the baptism. You know, our father speaking, this is my son. And then he was humiliated in the desert by the father of lies, the devil. And on and on and on. He's exalted and he's humiliated through his life. And then it ultimately is the transfiguration. He's exalted his transfiguration and then he's humiliated in Calvary in his crucifixion. And, and we have to accept <laughs> this is life. Life is full of mountains and valleys, ups and downs, exaltation, humiliation. And like it says in Ecclesiastes, 
Ecclesiastes chapter 3, there's a time for everything under heaven. There's a time to weep and there's a time to laugh. There's a time to gather, there's a time to scatter. There's a time of consolation and there's a time of affliction. And blessed are those who can accept this. That's what St. Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 1. Blessed be the God of consolation <laughs> who consoles us in our affliction that we may console others in their affliction with the same consolation that God consoles us. So consolations, afflictions, even afflictions, can God can make work for good. So we're called to accept, accept both. The second is, is praise. You know, we look down on ourselves, on our nature, you know, where we're helpless, we're, we're hopeless, we're full of despair, you know, looking at us. But when we look up to Jesus and his nature, who is holy and full of hope and risen, ascended, we're full of joy. And I think it's so important that every day we have a healthy dose of praise, praising God, our Father who art in in heaven. And every day we need to seek first the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God. And it's the language of praise. Um, and so we have access to heavenly places. And Jesus says, come and follow me. And we're called to follow Jesus in ascension right into heavenly places with our Father face to face. Thy name, thy kingdom, thy will be done every day, praising God. It's such an important message. And then finally is, is petition. You know, as, as Jesus ascended into heaven, our Blessed Mother Mary with, with the uh, disciples, the apostles, they ascended into the upper room. You know, and as Jesus was interceding at the right hand of the Father, so they were interceding in the upper room. And our life needs to be full of, of ascension, praise, but also intercession, petition. Really petitioning the Lord. That his kingdom come and his will be done. So we have access to the holy of holies. And it's a beautiful thought that when Jesus' heart was pierced open, his flesh was open, and we have access to the heavenly places. And it's called the continual work of mercy. That's what, and you know, and it's interesting. He talks about these, these, his wounds being lifted up to our Father. In another episode, he talks about Jesus Christ superstar. It's not Jesus Christ superstar. It's Jesus Christ super scar. You know, and we're called to lift up <laughs> our scars, our wounds to Jesus. Beautiful, what he says. He says, if you never. If you, if you ever, if you ever want good counsel, go to someone who suffers. Thanks be to God for our afflictions. <laughs> Thanks be to God for our wounds. We have not only access to heavenly places, we have access to the wounded people. We have access to afflicted people. And we can sympathize with them, just like Jesus. Um, and... And uh, whatever we do to the least, you know, we do to Jesus. And thanks to our wounds, we can sympathize with the least and the lowliest. And what we do to them, we do to Jesus. And we can offer up our wounds with Jesus uh, to our Father. So uh, it's just a great, great joy that this ascension is, is already going. We're already there by desire, by our potential, by Jesus. We're already glorified. So it gives a whole new meaning of J.C. Penny. You know, from peace and praise and petition comes pattern. You know, what will that penny be? What will that coin be? Will it be J.C. or J.C.? Will it be Julius Caesar or Jesus Christ? You know, let's really pray that we indeed be that, that image and likeness of Jesus and a whole life of peace, ups and downs, praise, because we're already there, and petition, doing the work of Jesus at the right hand of the Father and on the cross. Amen. Woohoo! Thank you so much, Father Will. I love that. Praise, uh, peace, praise, and petition. And uh, that super scar. Thank you so much for sharing that. Uh, Phil, please share with me what, what stuck out at you the most uh, today's lesson. So <clears throat> I am a very uh, concrete thinker. I've always been a concrete thinker. And I went to Mass for 30 years. And I said the creed every week at mass. Mm -hmm. And in my head, I'm thinking descent means down, ascent means up. Mm -hmm. Seated means seated. Right hand of the Father means right up there, right hand. And I always have to think, is it my right or his right? <laughs> right? <laughs> and I see him up on the throne. And now for the first time, Bishop Sheen tells me I need to look beyond these words. These words have different meaning, right? Descent means humiliation. Mm -hmm. Ascent means exaltation. Mm. Seated means being repose in, after conflict. And the right hand refers to the power of God. And so I'm, I'm so grateful to him for getting me to, to dig deeper. Uh, he go, takes us into the veil and, and teaches us about the veil. And I didn't know anything about the veil, mm. right? The, the very barrier between God and man is now destroyed. Mm. Wow. And then the same thing, human nature, human nature, divine nature. I spent no time in my life 
thinking of human, what's human nature? What does it even mean? What is a divine nature? And now, over the past lessons, he's been teaching us this, right? Teaching us what is a nature? What is a human nature, divine nature? And now we learn that the human nature is now in heaven. Wow. Wow. I never would have never thought that. I wouldn't have guessed that. I would have guessed, no, that's all divine up there. But our human nature mm-hmm. is, is in heaven. And that we are there too, or we can be there too. Not actually, but potentially, as long as we remain in the state of grace. So mm-hmm. that's our job, right? We have to remain in the state of grace. How do we do it? Through the church, right? Through the sacraments, through prayer, through going to mass, through the sacrament of reconciliation. That's how we stay in the state of grace. And he is the representative of all who invoke him. To pick up all the points that I did as well. That's awesome. I love that. You know, uh, blessed be his holy name, all of those who invoke him. Thank you so much, Phil, for sharing that. Uh, Greg, Greg Weston, please, uh, what really resonated with you today? There were so many things that I was uh, blessed by uh, through the process of just sort of learning more about what is what the things I've heard and said over the years, and and um, so just sort of following following the, the the course of the today's lesson was um, that, that Jesus, in fact, led his followers from suffering to salvation, and it was never actually said, but it but it was an amazing thing to realize how the the process that he he took us from from the time uh, that he continually takes us through the process of of our of our um, of our suffering and enables us to to see the salvation not only at the end of it, but the, through, through the process of it. And um, the, the, the function of uh, being seated, the repose or conflict. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, it's the, the word seated means repose after conflict. That really re- really struck me because it's, it's not seated, like I'm just going to sit down, but it's after sort of the a picture of, of, a, of a, a warrior coming off the battlefield and sitting down. He's, he's accomplished something, which is exactly what our Lord Jesus did. And um, the, there is no, there's one, there's no other mediator. The cross is the perpetual atonement and satisfaction for the sins of men. I was so blessed by that, that concept. I have finished the work. Rather than praying to his heavenly father, I have, I have finished the work for that thou have given me to do. He, he finished the work that we so often try to do striving in ourselves. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that, Greg. You know, what, what hit me was, you know, the first image that he mentioned of giving them, Jesus giving them a blessing. He bore the imprint of nails on his hands. Pierced hands best distribute blessings. And like Father Will said, if you ever want, and Father, and Bishop Sheen, I should say, if you ever want good counsel, go to someone who suffered. Imagine how much, how many of us out there, we've all experienced suffering of some sort. And depending on where you are right now, maybe you're amongst your, your brothers um, incarcerated. Uh, a lot of you all have experienced a lot of suffering. Uh, be there for each other in ways that a lot of us that aren't incarcerated can be to help each other. You have that wonderful blessing, believe it or not, a blessing to help someone who's far away from Jesus Christ to, to come to Jesus. Continue listening to these wonderful lessons. They, they are truly amazing. Um, there is no mediator. There's no other, I should say, no other mediator. The cross is the perpetual atonement and the satisfaction for the sins of men. From what, when Sheen said that, that really hit me. You know, I met, you know we have these crucifixes in front of us, and it's, it's a constant reminder to me of how much he gave for us, for you, for everybody seated around you today that have ever lived, that is living, that ever will live. That's huge. That's tremendous. I, 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 it's hard for me to fathom all that, how much he, he loves us. You know, that image of when you hear, how much did Jesus love you? Somebody asked him, and he stretched out his arms and, and, and died. So here in this first part of the creed, uh, it gets me ready for what's to come, as every single lesson does of Sheen's. And, uh, well, I could go on for another 10 minutes, but thank you uh, for this opportunity to share with all of you all out there. Um, Father Clay, Father Clay Hunt, what resonated with you? We praise God that we have the opportunity to reflect on these great mysteries of our faith. And Father Clay just returned recently from the Holy Land, Hmm. from a pilgrimage there. It was amazing that uh, I was able to visit all the 
the places of the mysteries of the Holy Rosary and the Ascension is, is one of them. And as St. Paul said, although he was in the form of God, Jesus did not deem equality with God. He emptied himself mm. and took the form of a slave. So mm -hmm. in order to, to raise up fallen humanity, he, he kind of consumed humanity itself in himself. He, he became one with us in our humanity that he may bring us into oneness with him, self, and his divinity. So that's magnificent. That's so wonderful for us to think. And actually, you know, Father Clay loves movies. Uh, I recent I like watching those movies of the superheroes and those kind of things. Sometimes they're a little bit uh, fantastic and exciting to watch. You know, special effects. Why well, was there on the the Mount of Olives near mm -hmm. Bethany where it was? accounted that our Lord ascended and they have a place where there is an impression in that in that rock, uh, it's solid rock and there's an impression where the Lord ascended, they say. And so I can imagine him uh, crouched down in power like Superman and then from there just to, to shoot up into the heavens <laughs> that he ascended to the mm. right hand of the Father Christ is the, the true Superman, and that's why everyone loved him. And it's a beautiful uh, inspiration to, to be able to know those things very deeply and to have confidence. And as Father Will was pointing out, it's true that all of us have our uh, sufferings that we bear and uh, hardships in life. Sometimes... Uh, we experience injustices and abuses from other people, uh, but we keep our trust to the Lord. I believe that was the liturgy in the Universal Church this very day. Jesus was the one who said, don't be afraid, just trust in me. Just, just have faith. And that's why it is necessary for us to, to be a people of faith. And... I always uh, love to consider what what happened when when he had already ascended. So he was a, he was going into the he heavens, and the apostles were looking there, and they were in awe as they saw the Lord ascend. And then all of a sudden, there were two messengers of the Lord there mm -hmm. in dazzling white, and they told him, mm -hmm. "Men of Galilee, why are you looking <laughs> up like that?" <laughs> he he told them, "Get to work." The angel told him, "He, you, you will see him coming again on the clouds in power, just as you have today. But now is the time for you to be about what he told you to do." And that's why I want to encourage all of you, my friends out there, just as we've been discussing, to exercise the disciplines that the Lord taught us. He taught us to pray. He taught us to serve to others. He gave us those beatitudes uh, to visit the poor, to, to visit to himself and the incarcerated person, to uh, clothe the naked. He, he gave us those, those beautiful uh, actions to incorporate into our daily lives that in fact we will be the ones, to pre we will be the ones prepared mm -hmm. to follow him where our humanity is made to be, and that's in the house of our Father. So that's why I encourage you that no matter what your state of life is, that you increase yourself in the exercises and the disciplines of prayer, that you read the sacred scriptures mm -hmm. daily. So with every hope and joy of the resurrection and with these certainties that the Lord told us, He said, I'm going to my Father, but I will surely come back to you. I will come back for you. So we push forward and move on. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thank you, Father Clay, and reminding us of the Superman. Uh, Jorge, I tell you, when we get to you, I'm eager to hear what comes forth from your mouth regarding today's lesson. Please share with us. 
Well, you know, a, a story that comes to me uh, is this is a man who comes up to a mountain and, and, and it's a big mountain and there's just no way he's going to be able to get around it. And he, and he looks up and there's a guy up at the top and he yells down, come up, come up. And he thinks, well, how, how, how did you get up there? How did you get up there? He said, no, no, come up. And, and he looks and he thinks, there's no way that guy got up there by climbing. And so he yells out, how did, how did you get up there? Show me that you're, you're truly a climber. And he stretches out his hands and he shows the scars and the marks in his hands. And that authenticates him. He's truly the climber. And, 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 but there's no way to get up. And so the, the climber from the top comes all the way down. And, and, is, and, and as he's coming down, he's nailing these spikes. And, and, and he goes down to the bottom and he begins to ascend back up. And every time he connects to one of those hooks and he throws a rope and he connects a hook and he throws the rope. And the man begins to realize that all he has to do is trust to grab that rope and to begin the impossible to ascend to the one that's in front of him that's ascending. And I think of that story, we, we go to Taurus, a prison, and we do the same course. And, uh, and, and yesterday, we always go to Mass before we go. And, and uh, as I was approaching the, the church, uh, there was a, a man who stopped me. He was a homeless man. And he says, hey, every Monday I see you here, and, and, and you're always going into the, into the church, and you never have given me any money. And I look at him, and I said, hey, come into the church and experience Jesus. And he says, wait, Jesus He's gone. He's never coming back. He's, he's gone. And I thought to myself, see, that there it is. We think of the ascension as Jesus is gone. And, and, and we hear what Jesus is saying is that we have to reflect that Jesus to those in the street, right? We ha as we had received the rope, we have to turn back to our brother and give them the rope, right? And, and it is this, this receiving and giving and this receiving and giving that we truly experience what God wants for us. He, he, he calls us to be home. And so the ascension to me is, is following and trusting our Lord. Amen. Following and trusting. Jesus, I trust in you. Thank you so much, Jorge. And as we do all Fulton Sheen prayer groups, uh, Jorge, would you please begin our closing prayer? Yes. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. Heavenly Father, we praise you and we thank you because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Jesus, thank you for this opportunity to come together as brothers and those in our listening audience and viewing audience as brothers and sisters. You have called us all here. You have called us, and you've asked us simply to look up. And so we are looking up in our time of prayer, prayer petitions, prayers of thanksgiving, prayers of supplication. Let's lift them up at this time. Lord, we pray for the gift of intercession for more upper rooms. As Jesus intercedes at the right hand of the Father, we may gather together in upper rooms with, with Mary, the mother of Jesus, the apostles and disciples, and really pray for a new Pentecost, a new outpouring of the Holy Spirit to come. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Uh, Lord, I'd like to pray a prayer of thanksgiving uh, for our brother Jason Nunez, who helps us in this room when he can with the, with the recording. Uh, and he has received his new kidney. Thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. And the kidney is uh, working. Thank you again, Lord. And we pray to you that, that he continues to get strong and fight off any infection. For this, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayers. prayers. Jesus truly is the bread of life. And he is truly the the author and finisher and the, and the sustenance of our existence. So that's, that's what I'm, my prayer is for myself, as well as all those uh, who are listening to this show today. This I pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayers. prayers. Lord Jesus, for an increase in intensity and desire for all of us, brothers and sisters in the Lord, listening and watching right now, that we may run to you with that fervor, uh, like the father did in the, the parable of the prodigal son, ran to his son. Uh, I pray that we all receive that grace and that desire to run to you. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Before the Lord ascended into heaven, he gave charge to the apostles and hmm. he told them to pray and he sent the Holy Spirit upon them. The, the bishops and the priests of Holy Mother Church and we need good shepherds. Mm -hmm. And we pray 
for the master of the harvest to send good laborers into his vineyard. We pray for holy bishops and for holy priests. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayers. Heavenly Father, we lift up all these prayer petitions, those spoken, those the recess of our heart. We lift them up to you, Heavenly Father, with the prayer your Son Jesus gave us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now at the hour of our death. Amen. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits, who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and, and to, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was in the beginning, beginning is now, and, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And that does it for Lesson 15. God love you. Today, in Lesson 15, The Ascension, Beyond the Space Age, she discussed that Christ's incarnation is linked to His Ascension. The significance that Christ ascended to heaven with His human nature intact with His divine nature. Next week, in Lesson 17, Church, the Body of Christ, the People of God, she will be discussing, when we hear the word Church, what comes to mind? Where is Christ's mystical body in the world today. Don't miss next week's show when Fulton Sheen takes us deeper into the understanding that life is worth living. God love you. Beloved family, I want to challenge you to gather together in small groups. This is what the church needs. The church began in the house of Nazareth and then it grew in the upper room and they continue to meet in homes as well as in the temple. It is so important we gather together in the name of Jesus. And that's what's so great about this venerable Fulton Sheehan uh, face-sharing group is to gather together to call on the Holy Spirit, a litany of humility, a humble heart so you can listen and learn. God speaking through this wonderful servant. These 20-minute talks, there are a total of 50 of them, philosophy of life. And by gathering together, a total of 50 times, and sharing the faith together and sharing your own personal journey together and praying together, the Holy Spirit, there's Jesus in your midst. And it's a powerful way to be transformed so you can transform the city and the world. And it only takes 10 people to save a city. And you might be one of them. How is God calling you to gather together a small group and hear and live the good news? Please join us again for another lesson from Archbishop Fulton Sheen. You can also listen to lessons and read transcripts at your leisure by visiting the website, theuniversalway.com. That's theuniversalway.com. God love you. Uh -huh.